What we're going to talk about now is the graph of tangent. So we're going to look at a couple things. Uh, this is on the back of your unit circle sheet, but uh, here's basically the general form for what we're talking about in terms of our tangent. And then uh, the period's going to be the same. Uh, well, it's, it's the same for a tangent and cotangent. If you notice, the period is different than what we've dealt with before, and it's pi over b. So when we look at the tangent, what we're actually going to determine is the, the time it takes for it to repeat its cycle is going to be pi instead of 2 pi. So tangent and cotangent are both pi over b. Now our uh, phase shift for tangent is a little bit different. Uh, you can see here's our phase shift for tangent. For sine and cosine, we would put 0 here and 2 pi here. In the middle, it's going to be still the same. And then it's, uh, it would be less than or equal to as opposed to uh, greater than or less than. Uh, so we still need to solve for x. Your divisions are going to be the same, and then the pattern's a little bit different. So here's our pattern for positive tangent, and here's our pot pattern for negative tangent. So kind of keep that in mind, and we'll look and see if we can't figure this stuff out. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how we how we're determining what our tangent is. So our tangent of our angle is sine over cosine. So I've gone through and listed a couple. Uh, this would be zero right here, and then one undefined, negative 1, 0, 1, undefined, negative 1, 0. So as you can see, it repeats uh, a little bit here. You can see each one, there's two things. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to graph from one undefined value to the next. So for our tangent, we're actually going to start here and then list our graph from here to here. So that's the part that we're going to normally graph. So that's, that's our general one cycle of our graph is from there to there. All right. Now, as you can see, this is 3 pi halves to pi halves. But instead of doing 3 pi halves, we actually just use negative pi halves. So we just rotate in this direction. And that way we don't have to deal with that big angle. So we do negative pi halves to positive pi halves. And as you can see, this pattern is going to repeat. It goes undefined, negative 1, 0, 1, undefined. And then negative 1, 0, 1, undefined. So there's actually two cycles of your tangent graph in one unit circle, as opposed to sine and cosine, where there is only one cycle. So let's see if we can't look at how to graph one on the next slide. So we go y is equal to the tangent of x minus pi force. Now, one thing that we would normally do with sine and cosine at this point is to find our amplitude. Well, tangent and cotangent do not have an amplitude, and the reason is is because their graphs are not wave functions. So we don't really need to find an amplitude. That doesn't mean that A doesn't come into our graph. That just means we don't need to find an amplitude. So again, one of the differences when we're finding the period, instead of being 2 pi over B, it's going to be just pi over B. So in this case, our B is our X coefficient, which is 1, so pi. Another big difference is our phase shift. Normally we'd put 0 here and then 2 pi over here when we're doing sine and cosine. This time we're doing tangent, so it's negative pi halves is less than bx minus c, which is less than pi halves. So we'll plug in those values and see if we can't solve for x. Okay. And what I would do is I would add pi force to each side. Uh, when I do that, this will give me negative pi force. Let's make that a different color. This will be 3 pi force. Again, same rules apply. So this is where our graph is going to start. This is where our graph is going to end and then uh, the distance between those two should be pi. Uh, lastly, we're going to find our divisions, which is going to be our period divided by 4. Okay, so that's the information we have. Now we're going to see if we can't use that and apply it to our graph. Luckily, a lot of this stuff is very similar to our sine and cosine. So we're going to start at negative pi fours. We're going to add our divisions four times. So when you add pi fours, you get 0. And then we'll be at pi fours. And then pi halves. And then add it one more time, and you'll be at three pi fours. So those are our five values. 
Now what we're going to have, if you go back and you look at your unit circle, we normally would start here and go to here. Well, if you notice at the ends of each of your tangents, you have an undefined value. Well, based on what we did with secant and cosecant, what we need to know is the undefined values are going to be vertical asymptotes. So we'll have a vertical asymptote here, and we'll have a vertical asymptote here. So that's why when we're doing your phase shift, we can't put equal to on both the inequalities because your tangent cannot be equal to those values since they are undefined. So we cannot plug in negative pi force here, and we pl cannot plug in 3 pi force. Okay, uh, next what we're going to be able to use to be able to graph this is our uh, pattern. So if you see that positive tangent goes like this, negative infinity, absolute, negative absolute value of A, zero, absolute value of A, and positive infinity. So what happens is I always usually start from the middle and say the middle one's going to be zero, unless of course we've shifted it vertically uh, somehow. And then here at zero, we're going to be at the negative absolute value of A. Well, A in our problem was one, so when you multiply that by negative one, you get negative one. If you notice here, we're at the absolute value of A. A in this problem again was one, so we'll be up at one. And now as you can see, as we approach our asymptote, what's happening is we're going down. So our graph will look something like this. And then as you approach this asymptote, your function's going up. So that's the graph of the positive tangent. Now again, that's still just one cycle. So if we wanted to keep and repeat that pattern, you'd come over, add another pi force, add another pi force again, add another pi force, and add another pi force again. And you could do this on either side of your graph, but we would have a vertical asymptote up here. This would be our x-intercept right there, there. So our graph would just repeat itself and look a little something like that. And you could do that on either side, but that's kind of how we come up with our tangent.